In this video, we're going to use the Curver to animate Copper's tail. The Curver is different than most smart warp meshes in that we use the Add Point tool to define its shape. And it's a great feature if you want to animate something like a tail, or perhaps a snake, or something that might be floppy. If you want to create an effect like that, this can be a great feature to use. And in the case of Copper, we will be using the tail. So let's come down here to the bottom of the layer list and we can toggle the visibility of the tail. And let's also make sure the tail is layer bound to the pelvis. So just like that, we now have the tail attached to the rig. Next, let's add the curver. So with tail still selected and we're on frame zero, let's go up to draw and then come down to create curver layer. Here, you'll see that we create what appears to be a smart warp mesh, but we have this vector going from point A to B. There's just two points making up this line, and then we have this light blue area indicating the area in which we can animate. And this is more demonstrated if we go past frame zero, you'll see that that mask or smart warp is cutting off the tail because it's outside the bounds of that blue rectangle. So that means when we set this up on frame zero, we want that blue rectangle to include the tail itself. And to make sure that this does wrap around the tail, let's add in some more points. Since this essentially is a vector line, we can come up and use the add point tool to add in more points. And in this case, we can add two more to help define this curve. So we'll add one here, and then add one right there. And then taking the transform points tool, we can come in and start to shape this to create the smart warp that we're looking for here. So if we come in, we can kind of come up, we can come up like this, grab the last point and move it up like so. So now the lines are mimicking the curve of the tail, but the rectangle is still cutting things off. So how do we deal with that? Well, we're going to come over here and grab the line width tool. And here, using the line width tool on each of these points, we can click and drag and go up and down with how we want to define this to create the look. So perhaps something about like that. And we could also come in, you can see that this line work is slightly cut off. We could just bring that end point up a little bit more like so. So there you go, you now have this area covering the entire tail. And if we go to frame one, you can see that nothing is cut off and the artwork is intact. So let's go to frame 12 and we're just going to grab the transform points tool again and start to move these points that we added to the tail. So if we come in and start to move this around, you can see that we are creating a nice looking flowing effect. If I were to grab the end point and move it out like this, you can see it looks like it's stretching and almost cascading out from the origin point. And this is also non-destructive. As mentioned, it is a warp layer that is doing the work here. You can see it's right down here. So you're not actually affecting the tail layer, but the warp layer. So we could come in and you can see on frame zero, I've already added some animation up to 12. And you could keep going with this and just animate how you want. You can also animate out the line width. So if you want to create a more cartoony bouncy effect, or you're just looking for something else to work with here, we can come in and let's grab that line width tool. And you can see now as I adjust the line width, we're able to create even a different effect. And this can be useful for correcting as well. As you can see right here, the way we have this set up, the line work doesn't really look that nice when it's bulging out like that. So we can kind of bring it down to make it more smoothed out and more natural looking. And you could just come in here and you can animate these things out, as you can see, just like that. You can adjust these using your Bezier handles as well. So if I click on the curvature tool and we come in here, you can see I have the ability to adjust the curvature. And this also allows us to work with how the lines are going to connect with the tail and all that. If we hold an alt, we can also do one Bezier at a time. And that will also create some unique looking effects. It could also potentially break 
what you're doing here. So you just got to be careful when you're making your adjustments and keep an eye on things. And I think you'll be able to create some nice looking effects with this pretty easily. Now let's take a look at the compressible curver layer. I removed the warp layer that we were working with just now, and we have now the tail selected. I'm just going to go up to draw and then choose create compressible curver layer. Here, we're just going to add in our points once again. And if we come in here and we make some adjustments, you can see it's acting just like the original was. So we can come in here and just kind of get everything set up. We can use that line width tool to create the look that we are going for here. So just like that, maybe move this up a little bit more to include that line work. And now we're going to go to frame six or anywhere past frame zero. Now, if I grab the end here and start to move it, you'll notice that the tail isn't cascading out like it was before from the origin point, but it's more acting like what you would expect a more traditional mask or warp to act like. But it's acting more like a traditional warp would, where each point has its own movement and it's tied to the other point. So by going up like this, you can see that we're compressing it in based on the proximity of this second point. So it's not cascading, but you're able to come in here and adjust this basically however you want versus having that more cascading effect occur with the regular curver tool. Now, let's just go ahead and we're going to remove that warp layer, go back to frame zero, and I'm just going to reapply now just the regular curver layer once again. We can see it's right there. On frame zero, I'm going to add in these points and just kind of create this curve like that. And then we have the line width, just making sure that we have the whole tail covered like that. Now, what I want to do is go up here to copper and we're going to make sure that no bones are currently selected although once you have copper selected we can go over here and let's just click on his head and then use the add bone tool holding in shift i can click and drag to create a bone like this going over here to bone constraints i'm just going to add in the angle constraints and we're just going to do a very short example movement here so i'm going to come in and let's bring this to zero and then we have the second value set to 90. So we just have a 90 degree angle movement here we can create. So we're just going to close that. And with this bone still selected, I'm just going to name it tail. And then we can bring up the actions. So window, actions. With that bone selected, I can create a new action named tail and then click OK. So on frame 24, I'm just going to grab this bone and just bring it down like this. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, we have the tail moving along. And that's because we have bone strength currently set up for how this is being controlled. So that means I can go back here to frame zero and just reduce the bone strength like this. So now you can see it's going to not affect the tail as it was. And let's say when we go to frame 24, we can go over here now to that warp layer. And we're just going to bring the tail down like so. Nothing too fancy, just kind of nice and level with the feet as much as we can here. So something like that. So now you have a bone that's going to lower the tail just like this. And if we come back here to the main line, let's just go to frame 12, go up to our bone layer. We can grab this bone now and we can move this up and down. And this is a very simple example. Of course, you could have multiple bones controlling different aspects of the tail. This is just showing one little movement you could do. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how the curver can be a powerful asset to the Moho library. So again, if you're looking to create a unique effect, perhaps a bushy tail, a snake, a worm, a flowing piece of cloth, this is a great option to check out. So be sure to keep it in mind.